Our scripture for today is a familiar one, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your namesake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Welcome home. Welcome back to this place that feels so familiar, even in these unfamiliar circumstances. Not quite as huggy as maybe you imagined it. Less noses. Welcome back, back to this place where you have found comfort and rest and to the physical feeling of being in community with other human beings. I will tell you that uh, the lectionary assigned for today was Jesus talking about divorce. So um, we didn't go with that one. <laughs> uh, we instead went with this familiar text, probably top two scriptures uh, that people know, even if they've never stepped foot in a church or a faith community of any kind, and they still could probably quote you the whole thing. I thought that it was only appropriate that as we start this new chapter of the worship life of hot metal, that we heard these words that speak so clearly about the promises of God, even when those promises still seem a little far away. For the last 18 plus months, we have been literally walking through a valley of death. Almost 5 million deaths worldwide, over 700,000 here in the United States, almost 30,000 in Pennsylvania due just to the coronavirus over the last, since the last time we gathered in this space. There's not a single person here unaffected by the toll of this pandemic. Most notably for us as a community, our own Norm Eddings died last year from the virus. And what has added to the pain of all this loss was the inability to gather together physically to mourn and lament. And I am so thankful for those of you who stuck it out on Zoom. God bless you. I don't know that I would have if I wasn't the pastor, right? Those of you who are there even now, who recognize that even an imperfect and sometimes draining form of connecting with one another was maybe better than nothing. And if you weren't able to do that, no judgment. Like I said, if you weren't paying me, I probably wouldn't have done it. Still, thank you to you for finding whatever ways you were able to survive and feel comforted. And I am glad you are here now. And I know that regardless of where you've been in relation to this physical and virtual community, as deep into the valley of shadows as you may have felt over the last year and a half, God was there. God was there. In whatever you found that brought comfort and reassurance. Whenever you realize that even though you felt lost or powerless, that was God being your good shepherd, telling you that actually you weren't. Whenever you found something that made you feel connected and refreshed in your faith, like that really good social media post or that card from a friend or opening your Bible to the exact right passage that you needed to hear, that was God leading you to refreshing waters in the midst of this long, long journey. And when you felt like there was nothing to hold on to, and yet you felt inexplicably grounded, that was God setting a staff on the ground for you to grab onto. This is the central tenet of our faith as Christians generally, but I also think there is something uniquely hot metal to it as well. 
we have striven to be a place where people can come and know that God is there with them, providing, yes, resources to meet needs, but also simply as a space of comfort. And even if we weren't able to worship physically together over these past months, we still did what we could to live into that hope while keeping as many people as safe as possible. So the table, I think, missed one session, which was St. Patrick's Day, which we were going to mess with on the south side anyway, right? And then Victoria, who is here, picked right up into a whole new way of doing things, um, a, a takeout format. And with her steadfast leadership, then with Meredith, and now with Carl, we have continued to feed on average 100 meals a week throughout this pandemic. Yeah, thank you. And I want to highlight, we've added new partners to come alongside us in that work, uh, providing meals, new reconnecting churches and groups. Um, I want to especially shout out to two restaurants here on the South Side who have stepped up the vault and Bonfire Grill. Um, so if you, you know, if you don't take a bag lunch with you, but then also go to the vault or Bonfire Grill, right, who both started right before the pandemic or maybe even during the pandemic. So you can imagine that the, they had a whole lot of other things on their mind that they could be thinking about, like, you know, running a restaurant that's hard even outside of a pandemic where people can't gather together to eat, right? Instead, they decided that providing delicious meals to those in need was worth whatever financial hit they might take. God providing green pastures and abundant banquet tables where it otherwise seemed desolate and scarce. When I think on the last 18 months, I could think only about the lack that we felt, or I can remember that there were these glimpses as well. Another memory I want to hold on to is when we had a hot metal bracket night uh, just to determine the best worship song that we sing here at Hot Metal. Um, it's pretty great. It was an idea. I had not only out of my love for uh, Bracket Night, which is a thing created by Emma Orban um, and Ryan Lowe. If you know them, you know about it, I'm sure. Um, but also I will admit that after a year plus in a pandemic, I was feeling lost and disconnected and frustrated that I as a, the pastor didn't have a firm grasp on what songs we held dear as a community. And so um, I needed a, a fun space to come together and like figure that out with people. So we gathered, there were maybe only 10 or 15 people on the Zoom bracket, um, but I felt like I walked away with a new and deeper understanding of who we are and what we proclaim to hold dear as a community. The winner of that bracket night, can you guess? Huh? It was beautiful things, yeah. <laughs> right, which we just sang. Uh, fitting because I guess Gunger played here. You guys are way cool. Um, but also because it is a song that proclaims the same message as Psalm 23. That even when things feel lost and painful and imperfect and like dust, God is there. Beauty is there. Hope is there. Another song on the bracket that made it maybe only halfway through, but that's like still top eight or something like that. And I know that I can see Heather on the Zoom call. It was vehemently defended by Heather. Heather has a deep love for this song. Um, it was the song Crowded Table. Uh, my understanding, it's a newer song, newer to the community. Uh, originally performed by the High Women. Uh, and it's not an explicitly religious song. It's not like, you know, Hillsong wrote it. But here's the chorus. I want a house with a crowded table and a place by the fire for everyone. Let us take on the world while we're young and able and bring us back together when the day is done. I think a part of the reason why Heather and others felt this was such a hot metal song is that even uh, it, that, that is the vision that we believe God has for the world, 
that we are trying to recreate even a tiny bit each and every week. We say explicitly of the communion table, you don't have to be a part of this community. If God has invited you, you are here and these are for you. And even if Jesus isn't specifically named in the song, much of what we hold dear is embodied in that open invitation. A savior who ate with whoever showed up, who told stories of wedding banquets where, that were abandoned by the nice people of society, right? only to be populated with whoever was found on the street invited in. We worship a Messiah who is willing to go literally through death in the face of enemies of all sorts to declare that God's love was big enough for all people and that no matter what we face, God has a table spread with an abundant banquet that we all get invited to. As we give thanks for being here together in this way that is at once familiar and entirely new. I think it's appropriate to treat this as a time to recommit to this vision of God's banquet and our small piece of it. Over the coming weeks and months, we'll be talking about how we commit to this community, where we're headed as we continue in this new phase. What does stewardship mean? What does mission mean? What does, what does our part of God's abundant banquet look like um, here and now? How can we make that clear? And so I do want you to start to think and pray about um, what that looks like for you, what gifts you can recommit to giving that helps us as live into that work of God. And for today, as you hear Alex sing Crowded Table in just a bit, I want you to think about where you have seen God's abundance in these last 18 months. Where did you feel the presence of the shepherd when you were lost? Or where did a banquet table show up when everything else felt desolate? Where did you find your place by the fire even when we couldn't be physically together? That's what we'll share if you so choose. I'm not going to force anyone into small groups, don't worry. But think of, of that as you listen to Alex. My prayer is that as you think back over the last 18 months, you of course acknowledge all that was lost but also that you see how God showed up. And as we turn toward the future, let's imagine how God might be continuing to call us to show up for our neighbors, for this community, and for the world that God loves. Amen.